If you like our video, click the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and get easy access to new content. To see our full suite of ad-free video courses and training materials, visit us at teachucomp.com. An estimate in QuickBooks Online is a proposal or quote for work you want to do for a customer. Estimates let you easily transfer their information to an invoice when you are ready to bill the customer without re-entering all the information from the estimate. If you enable progress invoicing in your company file, you can also send partial invoices from an estimate's totals as needed if invoicing from a project's estimate in phases. To transfer information from an estimate to an invoice, the estimate's status must be either accepted or pending, but not closed. It must also be saved and cannot have been fully invoiced. To create an estimate, click the plus new button in the navigation bar. Then click the estimate link under the customer heading in the menu to open the estimate window. Then select the name of the customer from the customer dropdown. Alternatively, to create an estimate from a project's projects details page if using QuickBooks Online Plus with projects enabled, Click the Add to Project button in the upper right corner of the Project Details page. Then select Estimate from the drop-down to create a new estimate and select the project from the Customer drop-down. These are just two ways to do the same task. The estimate status appears below the Customer drop-down. The default status is pending. To change the estimate status, click the status to show an estimate status drop-down. Select the desired estimate status from the estimate status drop-down. Optionally, enter values into the by and date fields to confirm who accepted the estimate and when. Then click outside the drop-down to close it. The selected customer and or project information appears in the fields at the top of the form. This includes the email, billing address, and shipping address fields. If needed to email the estimate later, Check the Send Later checkbox under the Email field. The Estimate Date field contains the current date and you can change it if needed. To set an expiration date for the estimate, select it from the Calendar Date selector for the Expiration Date field or click into the field to type a date. If shipping is enabled, the Shipping To, Ship Via, Shipping Date, and Tracking Number fields also appear. At the far right side of the window, the Estimate Number field shows the next highest available estimate number. If you enabled Custom Transaction Numbers in Sales Forms, then you can change this if needed. If you enabled Location Tracking, a Location drop-down also appears here. If you enabled Class Tracking on a Transaction level, then a Class drop-down also appears here. The Location of Sale field or Shipping From field shows your company's default sales address. You can change this if needed. To add a tag to this transaction, click into the Tags field and then select a tag from the menu of Tag Choices. Repeat as needed to apply tags from any relevant tag groups you have created. Alternatively, to add a new tag, type the tag's name, select it from the Add Choice in the drop-down menu that appears, and follow the on-screen prompts to add it to a new tag group for reporting purposes. The next area is the Line Items area where you enter the estimate's products and or services. If you enabled service dates in sales forms, you can select the service date for services to provide from the service date column. To select an existing item from the products and services list, click into the product service column and then select the item from the drop-down menu. If SKUs are enabled, the item SKU appears in the SKU column. Its description appears in the description column. You can also type a description here if desired. Enter the quantity of the product to buy or service to provide by typing it into the quantity field labeled QTY. The rate for the product or service per quantity unit appears in the rate field. You can change it if needed. The quantity field is multiplied by the rate field to show the total amount for the line item in the amount field. If entering a product or service without a rate or quantity, you can simply enter the total amount into the amount field if needed. If the product or service is taxable, ensure the tax field checkbox for the line item is checked. 
If classes are enabled and assigned by one to each row in transaction forms, then you can select a class from the class dropdown. After entering the first line item, continue adding line items until you enter all the line items needed for the estimate. At the left end of each line item row is a selection handle. To change the order of the line items, roll your mouse pointer over this handle until it turns into a four-pointed crossed arrow. Then click and drag the line item up or down and release it to reorganize the line items if needed. To delete a line item, click the delete button at the right end of the line item row to delete. To add a new line item row, click into the bottom line item row to automatically add a new row. Alternatively, to add four new rows at once, click the Add Lines button under the line items area. To delete all line items, click the Clear All Lines button in the same location. To add a subtotal to the estimate, select the row above where you want to insert the subtotal row. Then click the Add Subtotal button to add a subtotal line below the currently selected row. You can add as many subtotal lines as needed. To enter a message to show on the estimate, type it into the message displayed on estimate field. If you convert this estimate into an invoice and want to enter a message that appears as the invoice's description and the customer's statement, type it into the message displayed on statement field. In the lower left corner is the attachments field, which lets you attach a file to the estimate. You can drag and drop files onto the field or click the field's name or icon to open a file upload dialog box that you can use to browse for and then select the file to attach. Note the 20 megabyte file attachment size limit. In the lower right corner of the invoice is the subtotal, taxable subtotal, sales tax, discount, shipping and tax on shipping, total, and estimate total field information depending on which sales form features you enabled. The Select Tax Rate drop-down lets you select either the default based on location choice if using the Auto Sales Tax feature, or select a custom sales tax rate if you created those. Based on your selection, the Sales Tax to Collect appears to the right. If using the Auto Sales Tax and the Based on Location Choice, then you can click the See the Math link under the Sales Tax Amount to see the sales tax information and calculations and correct it if needed in the Let's Calculate Your Tax Rate pane that appears at the right side of the window as discussed in an earlier chapter. If you need to override the automatic sales tax calculation, click the Override This Amount link in this pane's lower right corner to open a section at the bottom of the pane that lets you enter either a new rate or amount to charge for sales tax, and then select a reason from the drop-down. You can then click the adjacent Confirm button to confirm the override. You can then close the pane by clicking the Close button in its lower right corner. Alternatively, to apply a custom sales tax rate if you created one, Select the sales tax rate from the Select Tax Rate drop-down. The amount of sales tax to collect then appears in a field to the right, which you can also change if needed. On a related note, if you enable the Discount field in your sales forms, you can use the Discount drop-down that appears next to the Select Tax Rate drop-down to select either the Discount Percent or Discount Value Choice. Then enter the percentage or amount into the field to the right. The discount is related to sales tax because you can click the button that looks like up and down arrows in a blue circle to the left of the sales tax rate and discount fields to switch the order of the two fields each time you click it. Doing this changes whether the discount is applied after sales tax is calculated or before sales tax is calculated based on the order in which the fields appear. If shipping is enabled, you can enter the amount of shipping into the shipping field. The tax on shipping field, if enabled, shows the sales tax on the shipping. The total and estimate total fields show the estimate's total amount. The toolbar at the bottom of the estimate lists the actions you can perform. Different options appear here when creating a new estimate versus opening an existing estimate. When creating a new estimate, you will see Cancel and Clear buttons at the left end of the toolbar. Clicking Cancel cancels the estimate's creation. 
Clicking Clear clears all the fields but keeps the window open. In the middle of the toolbar are the Printer Preview, Make Recurring, and Customize buttons. Clicking the Printer Preview button shows a pop-up menu that lets you check a print lighter checkbox or click the Printer Preview command. Checking the Print Lighter checkbox lets you filter by that delivery method if you batch print estimates later. Clicking the Printer Preview command saves the estimate and opens a window that shows the estimate as a PDF and lets you preview or print it. Clicking the Make Recurring button opens the Recurring Estimate window. This window lets you create a recurring estimate, which is not often needed by most companies. However, the process is essentially the same as creating a recurring invoice, which we discussed in an earlier chapter. You can click the Cancel button in the toolbar to cancel the recurring estimate and return to the main estimate screen. Clicking the Customize command in the toolbar lets you select a different estimate template to use, edit the current estimate template, or create a new estimate template by selecting a command in the pop-up menu that appears. After creating the estimate, you can click the Save button in the toolbar to save it. You can also directly click the Save and Send button at the right end of the toolbar to save and send the estimate by email, or click its drop-down arrow and then click either the Save and New or Save and Close command. Clicking the Save and New command saves the estimate and creates a new estimate. Clicking the Save and Close command saves the estimate and closes the estimate window. After saving an estimate, a new More button also appears in the toolbar at the bottom of the invoice. Clicking this button shows commands for Copy to copy the estimate, delete to delete the estimate, and audit history, which shows an audit history of the estimate. You can click any of these actions to perform the related activity. Remember to click the subscribe button to see more of our videos. Get ad-free courses at teachucomp.com.